today I have some undecember tips and tricks that you might or might not know. Why not watch the video and see what you can learn? Hello, this is I Do Damage and welcome back to the channel. In this undecember video, I want to do things a little bit differently. I want to highlight some community comments that we've seen here on the YouTube, Twitch stream, and other places. And I want to give everyone credit that has been helping out around here. We are a team and I love seeing the constructive comments helping out each other. And so I want to make a video highlighting some tips and tricks that I learned straight up from the comments and everyone in the community as a thank you. And hopefully if you're watching the video, you'll learn something along the way. I really hope you enjoy. The very first thing I want to talk about was brought up by Hero Cry. And thank you so much for bringing this topic up. He brought up on our gold spending video of a great way to farm gold. And that is through treasure goblins and going into their portals and getting the gold bars. Now, I know when I first got all these gold bars, I went straight to the vendor immediately and sold them all. You actually have three different options that you can do with these gold bars that I'm talking about. The first one is you can straight up sell the mats. But then over on YouTube, I had mentioned that you can synthesize these gold bars. And this is actually, this was brought up to me by Dark Ivan. We're going to talk about him a little bit in the video. Shout out to him. He does stream over on Twitch and the link to his channel will be down in the description below. Make sure you go drop the guy a follow. So he brought up that you can go over to the alchemy table and combine all of your gold bars that you find into a pile of gold bars. Now, when I had mentioned that you could do this, I got a response back from, I think it was, yeah, Death by Top Hats. A great name, by the way. Shout out to you. Thanks for being a part of the team here. And he brought up that if you synth these here, you're actually going to be losing about 300 gold as opposed to just vendoring these bars. So I took his word for it, but then I also went ahead and crunched the numbers myself. And so I have a little spreadsheet that I'll share with you. These are the numbers I came up with. These are the materials and how much total it would cost. So two gold ore would actually, you know, vendors for 50 gold each ore, but it's times two. So these are the total cost. And then to actually craft it out the crafting table does cost an additional 300 gold. So if you're looking at just that spreadsheet here, with just the materials alone, you would break even, but that extra 300 gold to craft, yes, you would be at a loss if you were to synthesize all of these materials into the pile of gold bars. However, you do gain 1200 alchemy XP. So maybe it's worthwhile to level up your alchemy. And I do think it is worth it because option number three that you can do with these pile of gold bars, again, another shout out to Dark Ivan. Go follow him over on Twitch in the description down below. He mentioned that these crafted statues, you can actually put up on the auction house and someone can buy them with rubies and then they can sell it for 50,000 gold. But now that I'm looking at this and uh, Ivan, if you're watching the video, <laughs> I just noticed this, man. I didn't notice this when we were talking about it earlier. It costs 50K gold to actually just even craft the statue. That's not even counting the price of these gold bars. So with a little bit of quick math, we can figure out that a crafted statue that you can sell for rubies on the auction house, I'll do a price check here in the video as well, would cost 65K just to make. But the trade-off here is you're essentially, you're taking that and you're, you're selling gold for rubies is really what you're doing because you're putting this item up, someone can buy it for rubies and then they can get their 50K gold for whatever the rubies is. And you also need these philosopher stones. I'm not sure how rare these are. I haven't found any yet. Let's go ahead and check the market price on a statue. So I went ahead here and I just did a quick search to see how many rubies you could pull if you managed to sell one of these. And there's quite a few listed here I'm noticing. Let's just sort by lowest buyout price, lowest to highest. Looks like you can get anywhere on the uh, on the top end, just shy of 200 rubies. Uh, on the low end, you're looking at about 70 rubies. So you would be investing 65,000 gold and potentially, I'm assuming someone will buy it you'll be getting 70 to 100 rubies in return. So if that's up if that's up to you, if you think it's worth it, if you think that's worth your 65K gold, uh, in my opinion, maybe. If you have enough gold and you're being a pure free-to-play player, that might be a great option to check out and invest into. So it's another source of rubies, essentially, or gold. Choice is yours. 
Thank you so much to Hero Cry, Death by Top Hats, and Dark Ivan over on Twitch, Dark Ivan73. Thank you guys so much for that awesome advice and being a part of the community and leaving those comments. You guys rock. We had some more great advice come from Chris, AK, Day of Exile, as well as Maniac1970. They took part in the comment section down below one of the videos. You guys rock. This is what they had to say. We were talking about the leveling up your runes. Remember, I was talking about spending gold and if I think you should spend gold just willy-nilly leveling up random runes and how it costs these elements. I still think you should try to focus your best, but if you mess up and you pick one that's, you know, a level 14, but you have a level 3 that you're working on, but you no longer want that 14, you can fuse that 14 in with your level 13 or level 3 skill, I guess, in that example. And this is how you do it. You just go to your normal rune growth interface and you would put in whatever skill it is. So let's say I want to take my intensify pain. And oh, the other thing is the skill has to be unequipped from your web. So just for an example here, let's say we want to level up that intensify pain. And I don't want siphon life anymore, but it's already level 14. Instead of just popping in these gems, you can pop in the skill. And consume the XP off that rune. Super cool tip. Thank you so much for sharing that. Great advice. Awesome to know. Help me out. I didn't know that. So that was great to hear. Thank you to Chris and Maniac1970 for that advice. Chris, your name's going to get mentioned a few more times here in the video. I appreciate your help, man. This was another cool little quality of life thing. If you remember in one of the videos, I pointed out a website that you could use to find out if uh, runes are from drops or crafted or from the shop or whatever. You don't need the website. It's all actually in the game. You go into the runes that you want to look at and you hit this little filter button here and you can actually sort by where you obtain the runes. So for example, in that video, we were talking about just, you know, putting three of the same rarity of skill gems together and then crafting a random one. That would be your synthesis. And that's what we were talking about in that video. So if we wanted to see what skills you only get from synthesis, you can filter here and boom, you can get all of these randomly from synthesizing. I'm assuming these common skills only come from synthesizing common runes, but could be wrong on that, but that's would make sense to me. Chris, you're up to bat again. We also had Brendan in Twitch chat talking to us about this as well. Everyone's talking about how many times they have tried to roll for a six link on an ability. And I wasn't entirely sure how they were tracking that. I didn't know if they were just, you know, keeping a tally mark, you know, on their notepad next to their computer. I thought, man, that sounds like a lot of work. There's got to be a way. So I asked and they answered me. So shout out to you guys for sharing the knowledge. What you do is you put in a skill rune and you pick the one that changes the amount of links. And you can see right here, there's a pity system. So once you hit 1500, it's a guaranteed six link, I think. I don't know. I haven't hit that. Let me know down in the comments if I am right or wrong on that, but that's what I'm assuming is once you hit at least 1500, you're guaranteed a six link. Anyway, that's that. And that is for all of your, uh, your attempts total. So it's not just per skill. It appears to be total for every skill. You can keep track of how many times you have used a rune birth essence to roll for a six link skill rune. I got a few more tips for you. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If so, go ahead and hit that like button. I got a few more tips for you. Thanks again to the community has, who has contributed all of this in helping make the video. You guys rock. Next up, we have Trevor Lindstammer. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. And we also had Rosty was in on this as well. They were talking about the upgrade essences you get for your skill runes. This one I'm talking about here, these straight up upgrades. So if I had a common in here which it looks like my meteor actually is common so i do need to get a uh, upgrade rune to upgrade this to magic trevor came in and stated that these skill rune magic upgrade essences are pretty uncommon so make sure you have a skill that you want to use it on before you just willy-nilly it but again remember you can transfer the rarity over to another skill if you're if you have one that you've upgraded by mistake and no longer want to use you can transfer it onto the other skill at the alchemy table using the transfer rune function. They also brought up down in the comment sections that you can make an alt character rush through act one, which takes about 20, 30 minutes and get to act two. And they actually give you one of those magic upgrade essences 
kind of as part of the tutorial and teaching you about this whole thing. But you can take that essence, put it in your stash, and give it to your main. Now, if you're really committed to doing this, and this is you know something that you think is an efficient way to farm this material, go for it. It does take three days to delete a character, and you can have up to you know three character slots total, so main and then two alts. So what you could do is, you know, do that every three days on two different characters. And then every three days you're getting two of those magic quality upgrade essences. And why I'm even mentioning this in the video is because in order to make a rare upgrade essence, you need 10 of the magic upgrade essences. And you can see that right here. So if you really want to, uh, personally for me, I'm probably not going to be leveling alts just for that material. I'll probably just play my main and hopefully get lucky with the treasure goblin portals because they can actually open a realm that goes into an elemental instead of a gold portal. It can go into an element portal. And that's actually how I got the material to upgrade my flamethrower to rare. So that's the method I'm choosing to use. But it is an option and it's there even you know if you're playing on other alts, whatever consider it thank you to trevor lynn master and rusty and we also had a uh, undo miel i'm probably saying these names totally wrong you guys rock thanks for taking part in the comment section down below rock on on to the next i think i only got a few more left so those are some of the really big tips and tricks that i wanted to share with you guys from the community here on the youtube channel twitch chat discord all of it thanks for being a part of it i have a few more bonus tips and tricks for you though if you want to keep watching the video that'd be great I want to talk a little bit about um, barrier. Alex Kirov brought this up and he asked what I thought about the tankiness of barrier. And to be honest, I think it's trash. I have invested quite a few times heavily into barrier from the Zodiac tree as well as on gear. And there's just some issues with it. I have a feeling later on down the road, there's going to be either some skill runes. Uh, I know there's one that generates barrier. I think that would help. And I think there's probably ways to make barrier a great defensive option for me personally though i'm going a little bit more after armor and what's really cool about this game and while you're leveling up you're going to be getting you know strength gear dex gear or intelligence gear which is strength is your armor dexterity is your dodge intelligence is your barrier but what's really cool is they have hybrid armor in this game that mixes the two stats so personally for me i'm going after pieces of gear that offer armor and barrier on it with that, though, you do have to have a little bit of strength and intelligence invested to be able to equip those items. So if I find armor that has armor and barrier on there, I go for those and I try to craft on those. That's kind of my strategy I'm taking. I got really lucky today with the drop, though, while I was out farming XP and I got this great piece. Look at the armor on this thing. So that kind of helps out quite a bit because you want to make sure you're trying to stay. My resistance is... Ugh, I'm going to need chaos once I'm getting into the end game. One more bonus tip and trick that I have. And this one's honestly pretty basic, but I don't know about you. I've been going through the game and I've been trying to figure out exactly how to scale some of the things in this game. And everything that is in yellow or this, this color here, I think that's kind of yellowish, isn't it? I don't know. But that can be modified in some way. At least that's my impression. And these are because you have tags on the skill. But these numbers down here that are in that yellowish color can be modified from either Zodiac or they can be scaled in some way. And where I'm going with this is area of effect. We had slain in the Twitch chat watching me use flamethrower. And I was struggling with it. The, the range on it was not very long at all. It was, it was I had to be pretty much in melee range. But I went through and I invested heavily in the Zodiac tree into area of effect. And shout out to D for helping me navigate this as well. And we just, there was some other nodes as well. If I do a build guide in the future, it'll, it'll all be in there of how I got all of it. But you can see on the flamethrower skill, there's actually an area of effect stat here, and it's blue, meaning that it is modified in some way. That's that. Over on Meteor, though, I don't see a area that has the area of effect tag, but I don't see that stat in here. But I know that the area of the Meteor has improved. So uh, maybe some of the skills have it, some don't. I don't know. But that's going to wrap it up for the tips and tricks that I got for you. I just, I don't know why I was just 
it was cool to see that area effect had an actual numerical value. Thanks, D, for pointing that out to me. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I hope you had fun. If so, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Turn that button to gray to make sure you are subscribed. Consider taking it one step further with a super thanks, or maybe become a channel member today. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, maybe now's the time. Come on over, and we'd love to have a chat with you. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.